So we have um, a pretty depressing story to cover here and yeah, it's just, it's pretty grim. So um, Caroline Flack um, recently committed suicide and I feel like there's a lot of blame to go around but there's also the wrong, some of the wrong people have been blamed and so it's really worth looking into and some of the things that but um let, let's let's get into the context first so Caroline Flack was originally meant to stand trial uh, for the assault on her boyfriend so this is a picture of her boyfriend here and she allegedly hit him with a uh, with a lamp over her head uh, over his head that's what she's been charged with look there's um obviously that's to do that is is assault and it's the wrong thing to do but did she deserve the scrutiny that she got from this uh definitely not so um, you know, one of her fears was that this would become a show trial. This is what her management said, and I think this is a quote from her as well, that um, this was going to become a show trial and that her name would get dragged through the mud. Um, she's a person who already had to deal with, um, is is dealing with, uh, or was, I guess, um, sadly say in this case, with depression. So this is an article from 2018, December, so about just, just, over, um, just over a year. Just over a year ago and um look she she even told the son you know i couldn't i just couldn't pick myself up um all at all that year um she was dealing with depression and that's um after after her sorry after her win on strictly come dancing so this was you know about that year so 2015 but um you know she was a person who did self-harming i believe and that's something we'll go into detail in a minute but but yeah let's let, let's let's have let's let's see who really deserves blame here so if we go into the secret barrister he's he does um legal stuff on obviously in real life but also on twitter so he's quite um a good person worth following and so he talked about the cps crown prosecution service so he said hey, this is a thread and i'll link it below Firstly, the criticism of the Crown Prosecution Service. Allegations of domestic violence raise a number of complexities. Often a complainant will withdraw the support of a prosecution, but for obvious reasons, that can't always be determinative. Cases cannot be dropped simply because the complainant doesn't want their pros partner prosecuted. Such a system would reward those who successfully coerce their victims to withdraw. Sometimes these cases must be pursued without the consent of the alleged victim, but not always. So what, what we can learn from this is that the CPS do sometimes act without the consent of um, the victim if it's in the public's interest or if they they would believe it's in the public's interest and there is some sort of test for that um, to check that and he he said himself or a she could be a girl um, they they said themselves that look they weren't too clued up on the case so he, they talked about in in broad terms but how are we still in the 21st century put the accused in the media stocks assume their guilt or moral fault reduce and minimize their human complexities de dehumanize and commodify the vulnerable and consume their personal tragedies for our own transient edification i'll go away the fingers are frantically pointed in every direction the articles are deleted and that's that's an important point so we'll look at history is rewritten maybe our priority should be instead to look at how we treat people the living breathing bleeding human beings at the center of our criminal justice system and she wasn't just you know they didn't just put out stories about obviously her being uh put on trial for assault i think it's it's important you know is it in the public interest you know she's a celebrity whatever you can try and make the case that it's worth um talking about that she's been put on trial for assault um but to to go after the way that you know the son and the male have it's just it's just vicious and so if we if we look at some of these um some of these things so this is from the archives this is an article they deleted um that's how bad it was and it basically says that no flax given brutal caroline flack valentine's um, Valentine's Day card mocks trouble to start with. I'll lamp, I'll effing lamp you. Um, what you know is it in the public interest to put up a story like this? And um, there's been a few of these where you know they put out you know headlines like these. This one, I think this one is fine. Um, I guess because this is a quote from the guy. But flack sack, flack sack and whack for ITV. So you know they're basically celebrating that they've gotten rid of her. You know hinting it's the right decision to do. Flax bedroom uh, bloodbath saying that look this gives the impression that this was you know the carnage this was you know all of his blood but it's not and that's something we'll look at in a minute um, so yeah these are some of the headlines that come out there were some there were some I think there were some worse ones I think um, this one this one here is pretty bad and so if we look at the Guardian they say that look she was repeatedly targeted by the tabloid following her arrest for an alleged assault against her boyfriend uh, last month which counted her out from the current season of Love Island that's that's not the important bit but look stuff stuff like this and if we look at some of these people look, i've always um always had a bad feeling about how caroline flack story um tried by social media what a terrible tragedy and that's someone corrected here um 
Mike Mick Wright. Mail Online published 16 stories about Caroline Flack since since her death was announced. It published 25 stories um, about her since the new year. Not positive stories. Um, I think a lot of them I, I struggled to find. Um, some of them might have been taken down, but yeah. You're slightly responsible for this one. And also the Sun's editor. So this guy's a senior person in the Sun. He's blaming ITV. She was distraught. They didn't stand by her. She was distraught at the lack of support given her. These these are things we can't... We struggle to verify. But yeah, you know, she was obviously separated from her boyfriend um, as well by order of the court. But yeah, look, Dan, what, you're not innocent in this one either, mate, to be honest. Um, you're the one... You're the editor. You're the one pushing out these stories. I'll go into in a minute. But look, if we look at what they did to, to Ant... You know, he was um, convicted of drink driving. If you look at some of the stories here, addict, ants, marriage under pressure. Um, you know, ants, new love, named in divorce. Uh, ants, wife, will divorce. Ant, forgive me. Mr. Loophole, couples bungled, ant probe. Police, ant, twice the limit. That one, yeah, okay, that's news. Um, face me in court, ant. Um, ant in anguish as he jets back to save marriage. Are these really in public interest? Are they? Nah, nah, they're not. No one, no one should really care about this. If you do, you, you're pretty sad. Unless you really care about Ant as a person. But, so, you know, some of these stories, they're not they're not worth publishing, are they? They're not worth the paper they're written on or printed on. And so if we look at this this example up here, so there's there's the picture of um, the blood, okay? The horror, you know, film, like a horror film and all these things, right? Um, Flax attack like a horror movie. And then they publish this story saying that most of the blood was hers. I think it was from self-harming. And so... Why wasn't that in there? Why have you put this picture up? Because you didn't know. You ran with a story you had no knowledge of. Not really. And that's that's what these people do. They jump to conclusions. They, they're they always after to drag someone on the mud. There's always someone they have to go for. They have to do this because they, they're desperate to sell. And so if we... The, how the press... Uh, how the press treat people... Members of the royal family. Okay? People... Royalty. Okay? The three... The editors of the three biggest um, selling tabloid newspapers at the time... Uh, uh, at the time of the death of Princess Diana have disclosed for the first time, so this is in 2007, have disclosed for the first time their own guilt over the accident which killed her. So this guy here, Mr. Hall, I felt hugely responsible for what happened and I think everyone in the media did. If the paparazzi hadn't been following in the car, um, they, the, car the car wouldn't have been speeding, you know, the accident may never have happened. And so that sort of aggressive style of uh, pursuing a story, you know, um, Essentially, that you know, he he's he's claiming he's responsible, partly responsible for that. And did they learn the lesson? No, because they put out stories like this. They hound people like this. She was afraid of a show trial. Do you wonder why that you know things you know she would have been hammered in the press. L lots of stories like this would have come out. Lots of stories, lots of headlines like these. These would have come out. And so th that's one of the things that she that sounds like she feared. I don't know her personally, so I can't you know I can't confirm these things, but. What can we see is that they've, they've done the same to, you know, Princess Diana. They've done the same to Princess Meghan um, now. So look, as the Duchess serves avocado for uh, toast for tea, is Meghan's favourite stack fueling drought and murder? You know, blaming her for, you know, um, the crisis, you know, some of the um, unethical aspects of avocados. Come on, man. You know, do we blame you for, you know, battery um, fed uh, chickens and things like that? You know, it's just it's just ridiculous. Some of the things that come out with Harry's an admiral chap, but to claim the publicity hungry Meghan is ha a hapless victim is crazy. Like I don't think she even is. Like most of the time, you guys are chasing her for a story, and so and so yeah. Do, do you see what I'm saying? This this is what they do. This is what the gutter press do. So the question you have to ask yourself. Actually, there's one more. There's one more important one. You know, this was her ex fiance. Um, Caroline Flack's ex fiance Brady looks downcast as he reads from his phone that um, Caroline took it, her own life. Okay, D can you imagine being the person having to take these pictures? But obviously he's upset. You know, he was he was obviously close with her at one point in his life, and he's he's deeply upset by this. And look, they've done this for cheap clicks. It's like, yeah, I reckon we can get a few clicks out of this. And look, and the sad thing is they were right because the article has over a thousand shares. So this this is what they do. They push someone to the edge. She took her own life, and then they monetize all the stories coming out afterwards. You know, they talk about how sad it was, how vulnerable she was, how much of a victim she was, how the CPS have done the wrong thing. No, it was you, big man. The CPS did the right thing. They had, so if it's in the public interest, yeah, they have to do this. This is their job. But it's not your job to put stories out like this. I suppose it is, isn't it? Because you're gutter press.
And so the three options we have, you have of, the, uh, sorry, the question you have to ask yourself is, is it their fault for putting out these stories or is it our fault for reading on these stories, clicking these stories and buying their newspapers? Whose fault is it? You know, people feed the beast by clicking on the articles, wherever it be, even if it's about football, just don't read it. You know, if you want to do something about it, stop reading these newspapers, stop buying them, stop stocking them in the shops, yeah? Stop, stop buying them. Don't, don't bother. If anyone asks, you know, what, uh, why can't I buy the sun out of this shop? Just say, look, it's got a press. Buy something decent. You know, go somewhere else. Essentially, no one goes into the shop just to buy the sun. If you do, you're either putting out for customers or you're a bit sad. So there's that, and that's that's one of the ways to do a boycott. Um, you can also try and target advertisers. I I'm not the biggest fan of this sort of strategy, but I think it worked with um, Lego Ninjago. I think they were one of the sponsors of um, one of those newspapers, and they pulled the sponsorship because people basically said, Look, I'm not going to buy your product because you're sponsoring essentially um, newspapers that pushed a few people, a fair few people over the edge, and obviously constantly bully people. So we don't want to, you know, we don't think your company should support that. And we're not going to support you if you do these sort of things. And that works, you know, it can a boycott that that kind of you know advertisement thing could come back against us. But it will work in this case, because if there's no money in it, they won't publish it. The final thing we can do is if you're famous or if the sun want to talk to you or interview you, do, do what Jurgen Klopp did here. Just so much respect for him for doing this. Um, so if we listen to the full. I don't, I don't talk, talk with the sun anymore. So I don't speak to the sun anymore. You can listen. That's, you know what? You, no, no, I know you don't. That's why I say no. So it's not because um, I'm in Liverpool now. It's because of a um, few things which will happen in the next few days or in the weeks. I don't know. No. No. Yeah. But I know. No. I don't know. That's not personal. But I'm still working for the sun, right? So. That's it. You can listen and can write what you want. That's how it is. And so, yeah, that's how. If you're famous, if they want to interview, look, these same people interviewed um, Callum Flack, you know, about her, you know, her win at Strictly, and, you know, she told them how she was, you know, she was suffering depression. These same people hounded her, right? So, regardless of if you talk to them or not, they will still go after you because that's what they're after is money. Cheap clicks and money. So, if you're a famous person, if they ask you to use your pictures or whatever, don't, don't help them. You know, get your own story. Get lost, and so that's my view on it. Um, if you want to, you know, if you want to impact them, look, I don't buy these newspapers. I do my best not to click on their stories unless you have to for research purposes. But if you if you do have to click on their, you know, their article for whatever reason, just use an ad blocker, please, please just use an ad blocker. They're not very hard to install. Um, you know, if need be, I do a goddamn tutorial on them um, for you know uh, for Google Chrome. But please just use an ad blocker if you're going to click on one of the articles. Don't give them the revenue. Yeah, they'll get traffic um, from it, but they won't get direct money um, off. You know, whatever you are reading, but yeah, you know, who who's to blame here for this one? It kind of is, you, you know, her her assault assaulting her boyfriend didn't help her, but the way she was kind of gone for in the press, no one deserves that. I don't care how famous you are, you know, um, you know, if she was convicted and they put out a few stories, then whatever. But you know, you hounded to someone, a person who's on trial, trial by social media, trial by media. It's not right, and um, yeah, I'll leave it there, and just let me know what you think, and if I see any disrespectful comments or whatever, you'll be in High Noon Episode 2, and then, um, you know, in a week's time, I'll probably delete them, to be honest, because no one needs to read that, um, if you're going to put out stupid things, people saying, you know, she deserved to die for what she did to her boyfriend, no, no, she didn't, um, yeah, assault was bad, but it's not something, it's, it's not something worth killing someone over, it's not, it's not a death, it shouldn't be a death sentence, um, but yeah, I'll leave it there, and I'll see you in the next one.